What is up gamers, John Jonah here. Um, thank you for joining me today. This video um, is strictly meant as a follow-up or uh, an update to my uh, previous video which was the Weaver Guide. Um, if you haven't seen that video yet, uh, I encourage you to please scroll down to the description below uh, and uh, just click the link, check out the video. Uh, if you don't have time for all of it, um, this video today is uh, strictly going to be an update on the armor build. So, um, if you don't, like I said, if you don't have time for all of it, there's uh, timestamps on that video that you can just click on the um, uh, part where I just discussed the armor. So, um, in the previous video, I talked about um, the best suited armor to equip onto your weaver. Um, that armor is called uh, the Viper armor. It's, um, as you can see, the the Viper um, stats are power, precision, condition damage, and expertise. And uh, like I discussed in the other, uh, in, in the guide to the Weaver, the most important things that you need for any condition build is condition damage and condition duration. Because these two traits right here uh, is going to make the difference between um, condition damage that's only going to deal 2,000 damage compared to an ability that's going to deal like 21,000 damage as you can see here with Churning Earth. So before I get started, uh, it is worth mentioning that there are two types of uh, Viper gear. There's the exotic armor, which is the one I have, uh, which is a little bit cheaper. And then there is the ascended version, which is also called the Yasith armor, uh, named after an NPC that we get to meet in uh, Crystal Desert as part of our quests. Um, the Yasith armor is the exact same as the Viper, except it's ascended. And I'll be discussing the differences between the Exotic and the Ascended uh, in a little while. Uh, for now, let's uh, talk about how you're going to make this armor. So before anything, you need to be able to have the Artificer and the Tailor uh, uh, crafting skill. And if you're goal is to make the exotic armor, all you need is 400 out of 500. If you're set on making the ascended, you're going to need to max out each crafting skill. Now let's talk about where you're going to get the recipes. They're actually just all on the trading post. You can go into um, crafting materials and recipes and all you have to do is type in Viper and you'll get everything you need from weapons to actual armor and this is like for heavy armor as well as light and medium armor so they're all just here uh, and I'll leave that up to you to find the correct armor that you want to build, or to craft rather. In terms of the Ascended, it is also on the trading post, known as Yasith. And everything you need here, you do notice that uh, the Ascended crafting recipes are slightly more expensive. Um, and essentially crafting the armor is going to be more expensive, but we'll get into that in a little bit later. Aside from the armor and the weapons, something that you're going to need is also the trinkets and the jewelry. And to accompany the Viper, you want the black diamond recipes. So you have the earring, the amulet, and the rings. And this will follow uh, the Viper equipment. So all you have to do is uh, essentially just buy them buy whichever ones you want, learn them, and uh, get your crafting level to the uh, level that you need, and you can get started. However, you will notice that there is one thing 
that's going to be missing. These recipes on the trading post give you everything you need except on how to craft the Viper Insignia. So in order to get the Viper Insignia recipe, you actually need to go all the way back to the Heart of Thorns in Auric Basin. You want to take this waypoint and travel to the Forgotten City, which is also known as Tarir. Once in Tarir, you can go ahead and talk to the Exalted Mastery Vendor. And in order to do that, you actually need to have Exalted Acceptance. So once you have that, you can go ahead and talk to him. Scroll halfway down, and you will see the um, uh, Viper Inscription and Viper Insignia. This is for the armor and weapon. You can also choose to purchase the Ascended versions if you choose to make the Ascended gear. Now, it is more expensive, so please keep that in mind. Now, once you've purchased all the recipes that you need uh, and have double-clicked them to learn them, uh, you can go ahead and start crafting. Now, if you're struggling with getting the last few levels or if you haven't been crafting and you don't know how to upgrade them, I've uh, left a link in the description uh, to a website that explains everything you need to know to get your crafting to maximum level. Now, it is costly. Some of the methods mm, do cost at least 30 gold, but it's very worth it if you plan on making uh, your gear, which I highly recommend you do because purchasing gear off the trading post isn't as good as when you craft them yourself. Now, the website I have given you is very straightforward. Uh, you just have to make sure to read all the instructions and you should be good to go. But if you would like me to make a video explaining how to use the site or a walkthrough of how to get your crafting to max level, uh, please let me know in the comments below and I will try my best to make that video. So now, after following all of those steps, uh, you should be able to start crafting your gear. So now to start with the boots, you have the Viper Exalted boots and these are essentially what you need. You can go here to see how to craft the Viper Insignia and likewise to craft the parts for the boots and it's the same with the shoulders, the mask, the the robe top and the robe bottom. You just have to kind of follow um, each part and you can get your very own Viper armor. Now the most expensive things that you will find is the linseed oil and um, the black diamond. Those are probably going to be the more expensive parts of crafting this gear. So just be mindful of that. Now, once you've crafted all your armor, it's time to make the weapons. Now, for weapons, you have your um, Focus, Scepter, Quarterstaff, and Trident. Now, there are things like your Dagger and Sword that will require a Weaponsmith profession in order to make. However, it is worth stating that uh, when you first start your weaver, you do get this sword for free in game. Um, it's gi sorry, it's given to you by the game, uh, and all you have to do at this point is select the stat and choose the viper stats. Now, uh, to create a scepter you're going to want to find the Viper Pearl Rod and follow everything you need in order to create it. Again, the most expensive part is going to be the linseed oil and 
the black diamond. And you can do that for the scepter, for the focus, and uh, staff and trident. For the dagger and sword, like I said, you would need a weaponsmith. So once you're done crafting all of your weapons, you want to go on your account that is um, proficient in jeweling. And once you do that, you want to look for the amulet, the earring, and the regular ring. And black diamond should be all at the top. And they're essentially all kind of requiring the same type of stuff. They're not hard to make, very, very easy. You are going to need 400 um, points and become like, max it out. Uh, once you do that, you should be good to go. Now, having explained all of that, I would like to talk to you about a friend of mine named AMC Gamer. Uh, she started off as a viewer on my Twitch channel, and now she games with me uh, whenever she whenever she can. And the reason why I'm mentioning her is because she actually made the Viper Ascended Armor, and I'd like to talk to you about some of the differences she pointed out to me um, when examining my exotic compared to her Ascended. Now, as you know, it's Power, Precision, Condition Damage, and Expertise. Now, in order to help you decide which armor set to pick, whether exotic or ascended, I'm just going to give you a rundown of what I have and then explain a rundown of what she has. So you can see my power is 2000, my precision is 43%, which is essentially a critical hit every second attack. My condition damage is 1500. I can of course increase it to 2000 with uh, abilities and boons and stuff like that. But uh, as, as a set mark, it's at 1500. And my condition duration is 47%. Which as you can see, bleeding is 100% and burning is 87%. It is very good and I have no complaints there. Uh, now, with my friend AMC Gamer, she actually has a uh, power of about 2,000, just like me. Precision of about 44%, so very similar to me, I think. But her condition damage is actually closer to 2,000. It's just over 2,000, um, if I'm remembering correctly. It's like 2,072, just slightly over. Her condition duration is 59%. This is actually extremely good. Almost 60% increase in condition duration. That is huge. And that is with the Ascended Gear. So with stats like that, you can bet that crafting Ascended Gear will cost roughly five times more than what you would get by crafting Viper. If you have a character who is your main character who does not have ascended armor, I would suggest crafting um, at least once uh, the ascended armor. You need at least one character to have ascended armor. Doesn't matter who it is or what it is, but you need at least one. Uh, this elementalist here he is my one character with Ascended Armor. Now, of course, if you're swimming in money, this is nothing for you. You could have every character have uh, Ascended Armor. But uh, I'm just talking in regards to people who are kind of short on, on gold, who don't have too much, and who can't afford to spend a lot. Now, once you've crafted the armor of your choice, uh, we can discuss how to dress it up a little bit. Now, with the armor, there's actually uh, two really important uh, runes that you should choose from. You have the runes of Balthazar and the runes of the crate. Now, given that you are an elementalist, your two main forms of condition damage is burning and bleeding. So, 
it is ideal for you to choose one of these and stick with it depending on how you wish to make your build now these are very inexpensive on the trading post so I encourage you if you don't know exactly which one you should do try both out dress up your armor with runes of Balthazar give it a go see how much your condition damage can apply and also give runes of the crate a try see what works better for you now you can dress up your armor with three of each rune set but keep in mind that it will only give you the first three perks of each set and it will not produce the most ideal build so I strictly suggest you pick one and stick with it now in terms of the sigils there are actually quite a few you can choose from but the most important one I will recommend is Superior Sigil of Malice. This increases condition duration by 10%, which is huge. I recommend making sure to have at least one weapon at all times to have the Sigil of Malice. No matter what it is, make sure at all times one of your weapons has this. From there, you can kind of pick and choose any of the following. Now, because there is a little bit of precision in the build, you can pick uh, sigils of accuracy, perception, and earth. But keep in mind, if you pick sigil of perception, you are missing out from sigil of corruption, which increases condition damage by 10 for each stack that you put on to a maximum of 25. Now, I would suggest that this is a better alternative than perception because you want that condition damage, especially if you uh, decided to pick the uh, exotic armor rather than the ascended. Uh, you're going to be lacking a little bit on condition damage. This will make up for it. Now, a couple other sigils you can take is Sigil of Agony and Sigil of Smoldering. Now, you can pick the same sigil that you've picked uh, as your rune. However, keep in mind that once you reach 100% of a given condition damage, the damage that applies may not increase anymore. There is a cap, there is a limit. So once you reach 100%, it's extremely redundant to pick the same sigil as your runes. So for this reason, I suggest the rune that you pick to dress up your armor, pick the opposite sigil to dress your weapon. So this is my recommendation. Of course, you are free to make any pick that you like depending on how you want to build your weaver from among these sigils here. It is worth noting as well that uh, if you decided to go with the ascended armor you do have infusion slots and with these infusion slots you can add something now of course this is if you're swimming in money but uh, um, this is the cheapest one that I found uh, that you can add. It's an infusion with an added bonus of plus five expertise. Now, of course, plus five expertise is not much, but when you put it on six pieces of armor and two pieces of uh, weaponry, you now have close to 40 expertise and that can make uh, the difference of about one to two percent in condition duration now one last thing before I show you uh, the new and improved build uh, there are a couple changes that I made to the traits the first being um, you'll notice that this armor does not uh, count for much survivability so in the weaver line I have actually switched 
from uh, the dual attacks weakening enemies to actually giving yourself a little bit of vitality because um, without it if you'll just observe my health how it changes that's a lot 3000 is 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 a lot and um, you're better off with that instead the next change you'll notice is in the fire attunement where I have switched from deal increased damage while attuned to fire to gain condition damage based on your power now the reason why I didn't have this in my first build was because the dire equipment that I initially had doesn't offer much for power and my power was 1000 however now my power is 2000 so 10 percent of my power equates to 200 condition damage which is very good now although it is worth it having reduced recharge on my abilities I would much rather have the uh, increased condition damage another change you can make although I haven't is you can switch from diamond skin to stone heart because as I've uh, kind of experienced uh, even in the crystal desert and outside uh, creatures can critically hit you so since you are a weaver and can have multiple attunements by multiple I mean two you can still keep yourself attuned to earth and fire and deal the correct damage that you would like while saving yourself a little bit of health because you do not have good toughness in this build it's worth uh, having just to save yourself a little bit of life while your healing skill recharges now because you've gotten rid of an ability that removes conditions what you can do is you can either switch signet of fire to cleansing fire to keep uh, one kind of burning ability or if you strictly want a burning condition build you can switch your signet of earth to cleansing fire because this guarantees that you have something to remove conditions when they're applied to you you may choose to get rid of primordial stance although I wouldn't because of the effectiveness of this ability it can apply condition damage for every tick that goes off on primordial stance and it is extremely effective for damage one thing that you'll notice is that I've actually gotten rid of uh, weave self and I've replaced it with uh, the fiery greatsword the reason I did this is um, weave self although it's a very good skill it is very impractical the whole point of its ability is that as soon as you trigger it you have to trigger a couple if not all of your attunements to get this to its full potential and by the time you do that weave self is only gonna be active for another 10 seconds so you don't have a lot to work with at this point so for this reason I've decided that it's not a practical ability and you should instead switch it to fiery greatsword because fiery greatsword deals a lot of condition damage and you get many uh, condition damage abilities that are very good okay now that I've gone over everything you need to know in this new build I am going to test out um, each kind of uh, um, rune and show you how the condition damage is applied so these next couple of clips is going to be me just fighting random mobs around the crystal desert showing you how each rune applies condition damage so this first clip is going to be superior rune of the crate accompanied with the sigil of malice and the sigil of smoldering
Okay, this next clip is going to be Runes of Balthazar, accompanied with Sigil of Malice, and this time Sigil of Agony, because as I mentioned before, you always want the counterpart to the runes that you've applied. Now, as you can see with this build, the um, condition durations actually switched. So now burning is at 100%, while bleeding is at 87%. Also in this clip, I'm going to be using um, Cleansing Fire in place of Sigil of Earth. Because since this is essentially going to be a fire build, uh, sorry, a burning uh, build, um, I'll try to steer clear from the bleeding.
All right, now after watching both of those clips, um, you can clearly see that the burning build produced much more overall damage over time. And that is simply because of the way burning stacks works. It works very differently than bleeding stacks. So for instance, um, if you have 10 stacks of burning, you would need about 25 stacks of bleeding to produce the same damage over time. So for that reason, I find that the burning build works a little bit better. But of course, I leave that completely up to you, depending on how you build your weaver, you might find that the bleeding works better. It is also worth mentioning that with Stoneheart, uh, Stoneheart only applies if your primary is Earth. If Earth becomes your secondary, you lose that Stoneheart. So you want to have it as a primary to keep a little bit of survivability. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, my update to the Weaver. I hope this kind of clarifies things and uh, helps a little bit. That's it for this video. Thank you all for joining me today. Uh, if you're ever unclear about anything uh, that I discuss in any of my videos, please feel free to leave me a comment below or even join my Discord to have a chat uh, about things that may be unclear that I can help clarify for you. So thank you all for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.